Any big dream starts with a seed of inspiration. And for us, that very first seed was planted in 2020. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was willing to learn. We started to dream big and we very quickly outgrew our little city lot. At our new property, we were blessed with 52 acres and it would take a lot of hard work to clear the forest for our garden. When you think about it, sowing a seed is an act of faith. Faith that it will grow and that you can take care of it and faith that it will produce a harvest. And we didn't have a garden space to put these seeds in. We just knew we would make it happen. Good morning. I'm so excited we get to start seeds today. It's March. And every year I uh, have started seeds, which is uh, now this will be three years in a row. I try to increase the number of seeds that I'm growing and um, my efficiency of you know, the lights, the potting mix, what kind of seeds I'm buying. And I am just so excited to start seeds this year. We've got our garden outside that we're um, slowly clearing the trees and building up uh, the area that we're going to be making raised beds in and uh, starting our transplants. I'm going to just start with the indoor farmer trays and um, get them washed up. They're still pretty dirty from last year before we moved. We kind of like just sprayed them off, uh, but they need to be given a bit of a clean so we don't get any disease in the soil. trays done as possible with the soil that I have. Get some more soil. Mm, it's not quite ready. I need some more water. It's a little better. Break up any of these big clumps. I'm going to remove any big sticks that I find. Yeah, like that's better. Can't squeeze it out, but it sticks. So these are the trays from Bootstrap Farmer. And here in Canada, I bought them through Indoor Farmer, which is a, sh I think it's a gardening shipping supply, but I'm not sure. But the actual brand is called Bootstrap Farmer. And they are just about indestructible. Their actual like advertisement for these trays is like driving um, a truck over top of it and it doesn't break. So I usually tap them down a little bit. Then you've got, it's filled about three quarters of the way full and it's packed down in there. And all the little squares in between release. And then that leaves me a bit of room to like add some more soil on top or the vermiculite. Ideally at some point I'll have a greenhouse to be able to do this in. But for now it has to be in the kitchen. I want to start now. This 
app called Seed Time tells you exactly for your growing season and your length of growing season when you should be planting what you want to grow. So for us, our last frost date is around like the beginning of June. I'm about at the point where I can start seeding cabbages, kale, kohlrabi, Swiss chard, and then next week will be lettuce. Start with cabbage because I know for sure I need to plant a lot of those. So for cabbage, we've got purple, some Chinese cabbage, golden acre cabbage, and plant some red cabbage. So for sure red. We've got our bok choy, Chinese yellow, purple lady, golden acre, that's an extra, savoy cabbage. Peppers is still too early because uh, those are you're only supposed to do um, like six to eight weeks before your last frost. There's dinosaur kale and then dwarf blue kale, Nero di Toscano, arugula. I'm not a big fan of arugula. In fact, it kind of makes me gag, but uh, a lot of people love it, so we might consider growing that for the market garden this year. Okay. Savoy. Golden Acre, now we're doing a market garden this year, it's our first time ever, and so it's very difficult for me to figure out like how much to start for us, too, because we want enough for us, but we also want enough to sell, and we're in a new, a new area, a new province. So we have no idea like who's around us really that will buy from us. So it's going to be kind of just a, a bit of a crapshoot this year. And then we'll have to adapt for next year. I'm going to plant a lot of kale because even if we don't eat it all, the chickens will enjoy it. I say that like we have chickens, but <laughs> we are ordering our chickens and we'll have them soon. Probably the meat chickens in May. And the laying hens will be here sometime probably around May as well. I don't know how many heads of cabbage one family needs per year, but we want to grow enough for Rob and I. And then for the market garden, we don't know how many people are going to buy from us, but we want to have a good stock that we can sell. We can always seed more if we have more space in the garden. We have a couple extra just in case they don't germinate. So now we're taking vermiculite and cinnamon and covering up the top of the soil so we don't get fungus and everything should be able to germinate right through the vermiculite because it's really light. It's in the name, get it? Vermiculite. Next up, cinnamon. And the final thing we have to do is just water it in. We're going to top water it for the first go around, maybe the second, but once they start to germinate, we're going to bottom water. And that will prevent, again, the algae growth and fungus. All right. Got all our kale, cabbage, bok choy, Chinese cabbage. All of that is done and seeded. <laughs> Just to, like record you doing all the work. <laughs> I plan on getting my hands dirty too. Good. Okay, garden first. Um, sure. Start moving those branches. To where? Maybe a central pile. We'll set them on fire. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> don't trip while you're on your phone. Sorry, I'm trying to mow the chest. Getting the swing of it. Trying not to fall. So it's March 15th. There's still snow on the ground. It's in the pluses though for temperature. And we've got almost 80 by 80 feet cleared of brush for the garden. Got this yellow marker here and we marked out the four corners. We've just been using the clippers, like a small and a large one, and clipping down all the brush so it makes it easier for us to actually cut down the trees. So we have a lot of birch and maple, poplar, and all these trees in here, and then for another maybe 20 feet or so, have to come down. So where do you want to have the central pile? Well, we could use that big one that's there already. Just, uh, uh, we'll just uh, consolidate all the piles into that big one. Okay. A little more bales going by. It's pretty wet. Good thing I got my rubber boots. Look at all the little sticks we end up tripping on. Oh. Oops. Don't worry, I'm just in here. Almost threw it on him. Oh man, that one's caught. That's a rob problem. Always be looking. Hey, Finn. Oh, you want that stick? Guys, you're robbing me of all the sticks. They have to go in the pile. <laughs> Fine, you can have those ones. The dogs took branches right out of my hands. We've never really cleared forest or built a garden at this scale. We didn't even know if the plans that we made are gonna work out, but so far, our story has been a lot of firsts. So we know that if we just put in enough effort, a little faith, and some determination, we would get the job done and we would have somewhere to plant our future. That. There, so water got inside. I don't know. Oh, glass. Worst. Since the snow has been melting and we've been clearing into the garden area, we're still finding the occasional piece of garbage and broken glass. Trying to be diligent and make sure that we're picking that stuff up and cleaning it up as we go. And we notice a lot of ruts. As far as we know, the last activity on this property was when it was logged about 15 years ago. So there's no telling what kind of stuff we'll find. Because we have to be able to plant in this in the spring. Ow. 
We're doing raised beds. Dang. You got smacked in the face. It just wanted to get into my face. It's still really slushy. I'm trying to walk around here. You don't have to fight over sticks. There's plenty of them to go around. Ben. Callie. What are you doing? I can't believe these dogs. Look yeah. at them. They're on mulching mode. Good boy. Where's your stick? Go get it. Yeah, that's a stick. <laughs> she is. She's on mulcher. We don't even need a wood chipper. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Watch your step. Just throwing these in the divots in the ground so that they act as filler. They're already decomposing. Just gonna turn into soil anyway. And Caitlin's just struggling to stay on her own two feet over there. Everything's normal. <laughs> okay, now I can dense all these piles into that pile. Or should we just burn these things individually? So it's going to be a lot of work, just throw it into one pile. Ah, ideals versus realism, eh? Because trying to move those piles can be really annoying. It is. Next, we'll need the chainsaw and the clippers. Let's uh, go get our tools. So the strategy here was to get all the lower brush cleared out. And once the lower brush was cleared out, it was a lot safer to be able to come in with the chainsaw and drop the trees themselves. We wanted to fill in the ruts with the dead trees and logs so that they could fill in and, and even out over time. And for all those big piles, we're probably just going to either buy or rent a wood chipper and just chip it all for the garden. There, it's 80 feet by 80 feet. This is all going to be like rustic raised log beds. We haven't completely designed it yet, but it's going to be rustic. Got this section over here we got to tidy up. So tripping over stuff left and right. It's nice that it's clear, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to walk through yet. If I fall, I'm getting impaled. Look at these little sticks. It's only a matter of time until you trip. Yeah. I want to get impaled. Whereas a bulldozer could just like flatten it all out. Like look at these, they're sharp. Yeah. You fall down on them and you're just going to get... It'll take a while before those rotten come out. Even just a tractor could probably fix a lot of it, but a tractor coming in with the stumps, I don't know how good it'd be. It'd have to be a pretty darn big tractor. Once I cut these down, you guys fighting over one stick when there's an endless amount of sticks out here. Gotta take down that Widowmaker. There's the raven. One of many. Oh, I forgot his gloves. These clippers. Thank you. Do that. 
Why does it do that? What? Why does it do that? Gravity. Pinches. With a few more dozen hours of experience, it's painful to go back and, and watch how I was using the chainsaw. What I didn't know at the time is I'd been sharpening the chain wrong. And so as it would cut into the tree, it would actually start to bend the blade and pinch it. So I couldn't get through the tree all the way. I was exerting a lot of effort and getting very little progress in return. But I struggled through it, my own stupidity. <laughs> Eventually, I learned that all I needed was a new chain and how to sharpen it properly. But that's what you get when you're starting off and you're brand new and you don't know what you're doing. But you learn as you go. There it goes. There it goes. You opened it up though, eh? We've got quite an open path now at least. I mean, sort of. Like This one's not. Coming from, from here and looking that way though. Just dropping those few. It's starting to open up. Yeah. I can take those bigger clippers. I can take most of these, this small stuff down. After months of preparation, it's a big day on the farm, as we have a special delivery. We're hoping that you'll join us on the next episode, Ravenwill Farmstead.